Hello everyone, welcome to Reset, a new thought leadership series organized by Art and Market in partnership with Singapore at Week 2021. My name is Siva and I am Content Manager at Art and Market. Over six panel discussions taking place in December and January, we will explore individual and collective efforts on current key issues and solutions in the local, regional and international art scenes. Featuring the voice of innovators, this get-together is an opportunity to share knowledge about ways to move synergistically into 2021. Today's talk is titled, Making Space, Support Systems for a Diverse Art Ecosystem. What are the challenges to sustaining a healthy ecosystem that supports artists at various points in their careers? How do different stakeholders work together to provide mentorship to young practitioners? Our panelists speak about the importance of making space for diversity and independent interests. Before we begin, I would like to thank everyone for spending the next hour with us. If you have a question to ask the panelists, you can type it up anytime in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we will get to them during the question and answer segment. I'm now pleased to introduce the panel. We have with us today, Hansong Holtzman, Director, Goethe Institute, Singapore. We have with us James H, Foundry Director, Georgia Athlet. We have with us today, Michelle J. N. Lim, Artist and Editor, Plural Art Mag. And last but not least, we have with us today, Wang Roping, Co-Founder of Commerce Space. The program will be, mod sorry, the panel will be moderated by Chelsea Chua, Program Director, Objective Center for Photography and Film. Chelsea, over to you. Thank you, Siwa, for the introduction and thank you, Art and Market, for organizing this series of talks and making this discussion possible. Um, to everyone in the audience, thank you for making the time to attend our talk today at the start of a very busy Singapore Art Week. Um, as Siwa had mentioned, our discussion today is entitled Making Space. And across the experiences of our four speakers today, we have people who run physical spaces like Robin and James, speakers who create space for connections and creation such as Hanson and Michelle. Um, so before we get into the discussion, I'd like to invite each of them to share a little about themselves and the work they do for each of their organizations. Uh, perhaps Hanson, you'd like to start? Yep. Um... Hello, I'm Han Song. I'm the director of the Goethe Institute here in Singapore. Um, the, maybe a few words to, uh, about my organization. Um, the Goethe Institute is the uh, official cultural institute of Germany and we conduct foreign culture relation. And our main mission, therefore, besides uh, German language and informing about Germany is cultural exchange. And we are not a government uh, agency, but a public agency, though we are partially government funded. Uh, two thirds of our bu budget we, uh, is provided by the German parliament through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the rest of our budget, uh, we raise ourselves. Um, so in that sense, we are um, a non-political organization, but a, a genuine cultural organization work in, in, a, in the public interest, which is also reflected in our structure. For instance, the members of our board, of our committees, are representatives from um, the art scene in Germany. And um, But as much as we are a the German National Cultural Institute, we are also an international organization with um, now um, 160 institutes uh, worldwide. Mm, we see ourselves uh, mainly as, as enabler, as, as mediator when it comes to international collab collaboration in the arts. And um, we not only work in bilateral ways, for instance, Germany and Singapore, but increasingly multilateral as well. Um, we have several regional initiatives we also conduct uh, uh, from here, from Singapore um, and, and other places around the world, as there's a more and more stronger acknowledgement that, of course, cultural practice um, goes beyond uh, definitions of, 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 of nations uh, and states. And, um, and 
yeah, maybe just one thing to point out. Um, I mean, here in Singapore, we are present uh, since the 70s. And for everyone who has not visited us yes, yet, we are located at Neil Road at the edge of Chinatown. Um, most of our initiatives and projects we conduct in collaboration with partners here in Singapore, because only then we can ensure the relevancy of our work. Um, and the focus has somewhat a little bit shifted away from this classical representational approach of, of cultural relations. And uh, we are much more focusing on actual exchange uh, to build up sustainable relations, sustainable networks, and sort of the, the different platforms and groundworks on which cultural exchange can ongoingly happen. So that's uh, what we are trying to do. And to do that, we do rely on strong partners here in Singapore um, to fulfill our mission. That's so far from our side. Thank you, Han Song. Uh... James, perhaps you would like to share about your work with the Chokja Art Lab? Uh, sure. Hello. Uh, my name is James. Uh, the Chokja Art Laboratory is, is owned by Gaja Gallery. It's a privately run uh, art lab based in Chokja. Uh, the building itself is actually owned by Yunasa, who's one of our contemporary Indonesian artists. And since uh, 2012, uh, and then when I was involved in 2014 onwards, we have been specializing uh, predominantly in casting uh, lost wax and ceramic shell casting of, of silicon bronze, uh, doing fine art casting. But we also work with aluminum, resin, uh, and we will explore different materials for different artists. So uh, we will develop using, for example, concrete, uh, crushed glass, uh, we have used uh, cement as, as well. Uh, so the, the practice really, uh, which was very good both for the uh, regional artists, so it's not just Singaporean artists, but Indonesian artists, Malaysian, Chinese, um, is that they have the ability to come to us and without a pressure of time and with a relative ease, easing up on, on cost, uh, because we will uh, absorb the production costs actually. So the way that we work, we will invite an artist, they will work with us and within reason we will develop and create a work with them using materials quite often that they have not used before uh, and, and create those sculptures. So a good example would be Suzanne Victor with the Crushed Glass uh, series uh, and we've continued to be working with Suzanne developing new pieces. Uh, Jane Lee with pigmented concrete. Uh, Unisar himself had never been able to do bronze sculpture, and that was actually why this entire facility came about. Uh, and importantly for us is that Yao uh, is a facility which does this ceramic shell lost wax, and, and that quality of casting with the quality of silicon bronze is extremely hard to, to find in Indonesia. It's, it's very hard to find in Singapore, it's hard to find in the Philippines. There are some foundries in Thailand, obviously, which do it. So we offer a, a great facility and quality of work um, to regions which, which don't have the facilities actually to pull off that, that quality of uh, sculpture. Uh, and, and that's how we're progressing. Um, it's very enjoyable to work for it. Um, with a team of about 14 to 20 people depending on projects. And the assembly of, of, of artists is also growing. Uh, we have Jigger Cruz, Whaley Gang. Uh, we've even done pieces for Kamari, Yunasa, Handy Wehrman, um, Kaylee, a young artist working with Cement, Jane Lee, uh, and, and so on. Uh, so sums it up quite well. Thank you so much, James, for sharing that. It's really interesting. Um, so working with different mediums that way. Um, Michelle, uh, perhaps you'd like to share about your work with Plural Art. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this Friday afternoon. I'm Michelle, an artist as well as editor at Plural Art Mag. We are a digital art publication uh, and we cover Southeast Asian art and art events, but we're based in Singapore. 
Uh, it all started out as a passion project between um, two founders, Pauline Gunn and Usha Chandradas, when they were doing their MA in Asian Art Histories at LaSalle. But in the four years since, Plural has grown into a magazine with a team of writers and a lively social media presence. And we've, we're, we've also been um, you know, trying our hand at different other projects as well. So since last year, we've ventured beyond the editorial to explore other projects that continue our mission of supporting artists and the art community. Last August, for example, we launched our Heartlands project in partnership with National Arts Council. So this was a digital project that showcased the works of 100 local artists back in a time when we were still knee deep in the pandemic circuit breaker mode. Yeah. And um, towards the end of last year, we also launched Shop Plural, which is an online store where we partner artists to share their art and art objects via an online shop um, in the hopes that you know, it would reach a different market from art that you would normally see in, gallery, uh, in galleries. It's not, really, it's not a gallery, but it's more to, um, to explore this previously unexplored uh, niche where you know, perhaps we could connect artists and new audiences through more affordable art objects. And uh, most recently, we've been busy with the inaugural Saw Art Symposium, which will be happening in hybrid format digitally and at Victoria Theatre from next Wednesday to Friday, 27 to 29 January. So you can expect speakers like Takashi Kudo from Team Lab, Daniel Birnbaum, Artistic Director of Acute Art, and many other leaders and thinkers of the in international art industry. So if you're a fan of talks, which you must be because you're joining us on a Friday afternoon for this, uh, please check us out on artweek.sg. So that's all from me for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm looking forward to checking out your SAW program. Um, Rob Bing, uh, perhaps you'd like to share about what you do with Comma, Comma Space? Hi, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rob Bing. I'm an artist and co-founder of Comma Space. So Comma Space is an independent artist-run space located between Bishan, the Miramar MRT stations inside a 40 years old industry building. So uh, referring to the commerce functionality of separating, setting off freezes and expressing contrast, we see commerce space as in between point where creativity and critique can collide and where bounds can be forged. So during Seoul, Singapore Art Week, we are presenting two projects. So the first project that in on-site project at Commerce Space is by our pioneer artist Tang Da Wu. Um, the title is Chun Xing Chun Tie Chun Xing. An inch of effort, an inch of metal, an inch of effort. So this is a site-specific installation. Um, yeah, Da Wu has been working, you know, um, during the exhibition as well. So do check it out and the show uh, opens until the end of the month, 31st of Jan. So we are also presenting um, a group show at, um, at the Gilman Barrack, and which is, um, which is off-site show, yeah? And it's called Artists as Collector. Artists as Collector, we invited 50 local artists um, to present just one of the selection uh, from their own personal collection. So we're not looking at the material, the, the theme, the quality of the artwork. We're looking at the relationship, the, the, the stories behind such a collection, how they have been come into an artist's uh, personal uh, space. So it could be gifted, it could be exchanged, it could be trashed, you know, by an artist, another artist pick it up. Um, treat it as treasure. So uh, it's the exhibition is starting actually from today. So if you are going to Gilman Barrick, uh, do visit us. And we also capture the 50 story in the catalog. So grab a catalog at the exhibition as well. Uh, the space is at Broad 1, Lot Row 01 01. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robin. Um, so perhaps now we can get into the, the sort of thick of the discussion. 
Um, and I suppose we are considering the idea of making space here in sort of many uh, forms. Uh, there's of course uh, physical space um, and also the kind of opportunities that each of you are, are doing through your work to provide those sorts of um, spaces for um, dialogue and art making and exchange. Um, and perhaps we can start with uh, Robbing and James for this discussion um, in the time aside from the kind of physical space that your organizations also provide, the kind of expertise that you bring to the table. Um, James, of course, with the technical know-how with you and your team uh, with regards to working to different, with different materials and with Rob Bing, um, I understand that you're also very much involved as a curator with the presentation of many of the projects. Um, perhaps, James, you'd like to start? Yeah, I mean, the, the space itself, the importance of the spaces is obviously enabling those artists uh, not only to be able to explore with a, uh, with a freedom of, of time. And I think that what sets apart uh, quite specifically really our foundry from nearly any other foundry is that when you come to do a work with us, uh, we do not expect you to have the finished say, product and we'll just cast it. Quite often we are working from the very start so we have clay modelers we have sketch artists we have uh, 3d designers we have 3d printers uh, whatever you want really to enable that work to grow and to develop and the team in indonesia are also now very used uh, to the experience of, of getting you know a mile down the road and and simply realizing it, it doesn't work or it's not to the artist's liking and being prepared to then just say stop we'll start again and that can only come with, a, with a, an element of financial uh, freedom, but it also comes with a team who are, are very used and prepared to, to stop starting again, changing, developing, processing, and not just expecting a nine to five, uh, same job every day, do it again, do it again. Uh, so we're very fortunate with that. I think for artists, uh, it's also the ability to have a facility there to, to create work that they cannot necessarily do by themselves, which they definitely couldn't do in Singapore. The, the foundry here, they, you know, they, they are not really fine art foundries. You would have to outsource it. It's very hard to control. Uh, and, and part of my job is to be in a constant dialogue with the artist uh, with constant updates. Uh, they come out to jobs are obviously pre-COVID. Um, and to, to enable a constant sort of process of, of creating a work. Uh, I think it is noticeable, you know, as with Unisar, for example, he, they just couldn't do that quality of bronze casting. Ha Han uh, is an uh, Indonesian contemporary artist. He's giving us works which he knows he couldn't cast elsewhere. Same with Handy Wehrman with bronze. Uh, we can pick up fingerprints in, in, in the bronze. And that can only be done using ceramic shell technique. And it's an expensive and, and very time-consuming process of, of casting, and, and normally it would be sand cast. I mean, this is all technical detail, but I think that's the most important aspect: is its flexibility and the ability to throw a team at something without the pressure of of having to result in a, in a piece uh, with the flexibility of saying, "Okay, you know, let's try something else. We'll try something else, or we'll develop." And develop. Well, for sure, I think that um, what you've pointed out very rightly, you know, that sort of um, luxury of time, um, space, and the kind of support that you're able to provide to the artists is so integral to sort of facilitating the kind of art making that that you're you're hoping to kind of nurture. And I think that very much feeds into uh, what Robbing is doing with Common Space, um, especially with you know her year long. Uh, Robbing with your year-long uh, curatorial series and uh, the amount of time you obviously spend with each artist to make each presentation happen. Uh, would you like to share about that, Robbing? Yeah, um, in regards of a physical space, I think um, because I'm an artist, my partner is an artist as well. So we, uh, we understand how important a physical space where you can present your work is so important. Uh, being artists, we practice exercise our, our ideas, we thinking about our ideas in the studio space, but still you need um, 
a, a kind of space where you can meet people, you can present it in a way that you want it, um, that way to be, be presented. And also a physical space could function as a, a meeting point where, um, where the artwork, the ideas could be accessible to, um, to, to the public who are interested to, to, to know this idea, to see this idea. I think that's the reason I think um, physical space is quite uh, important as a part of artist practice. Um, so uh, so uh, talking about 12, star, uh, uh, 12 solo series, so this is a series how uh, we conceive to kick start of common space. So we invited one artist um, to take over the space. Uh, it's not a very big space, so not so much pressure, but the pressure comes with one artist, just one single work. You know, one single work um, to utilize the space is quite challenging, but it's also very tempting because you own the space, you deal with the space, and um, you have been very focused. And the one advantage of having a physical space, um, which is long institutional and long uh, uh, non-commercial um, is the freedom of expression, where you have you can you can make decision quicker. You can uh, you can make changes because you know artists' idea always progress, right? You it, sometimes it's very hard to stick on your proposal for a year because when you propose, they they when you realize the idea is probably a year later, and then the sense has been involved, um, your idea perhaps already progressed from there. So I think that's um, that's this type of physical space actually can give to the artist the freedom, exper experimentation, and um, you know, and also. Um, also uh, a kind of um, uh, openness to the diversified um, activities. So we, are, we don't really like 12 solo, you can see we have social engaged art, we have, uh, uh, you know, interactive art, we have, you know, installation. In, so we have, we embrace all, all kinds of um, ex way of expression. That's, that's really beautiful and um, I think that you know what uh, Robin and James have, have pointed out also that the kind of actualization of the work is so important and um, apart from that the kind of um, dialogue and exchange that happens uh, between yourselves between the artists is so important to the art making process um, and you know perhaps we can turn to now Han Song and Michelle um, with the kind of work that they do in terms of providing opportunities and exposure um, and kind of networking um, opportunities for artists um, to talk about you know, how their work feeds into um, what we're trying to, what we're addressing here in terms of making space. Um, Han Song, would you like to start? Um, sure. I, well, I think for our organization, and just let me just briefly point it out. Uh, it has become very apparent that uh, our physical presence around the world is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And that when it comes to enabling um, international collaboration, um, which sort of dribbles down in many different forms, it can be knowledge exchange, it can be co-production, um, it, it, it can be to create different platforms to bring bring different expert arts practitioners together. This kind of work is, um, in, in my view, not um, possible uh, if you are not able to be physically present and not to be able directly uh, engage with the art ecosystem um, which surrounds you. So when we look at the construction of the Goethe Institute, we are as much um, embedded and deeply rooted in the German art scene, which we which we re represent as an organization, um, as well as in the uh, local art scene uh, where we are um, where we are present with our institutes, like here in Singapore. Um, I mean, we see ourselves as much um, um, as being a German institution as being part of the Singapore arts ecosystem. 
And I think only with that kind of uh, uh, awareness, uh, we can we can uh, able to to operate. Um, the sort of the, the the other thing which is sort of we are teasing into now the general question of um, spaces for the arts spaces for um, arts practice i think it's it is a very big difference to whom this question is addressed to if you address this the question of space to an arts practitioner it's a it's a complete uh, 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 you will find a complete different answer than if you address this question to an enabler or to a public organization and um, I mean, I think it's um, it's it's in the end it is to with a space, uh, whether it's digital or whether it's physical. In the end, it's about um, especially for uh, enablers uh, such as we are to create uh, the condition in which artistic practice can unfold and happen, with the acknowledgement that these conditions might be different than of other areas like um, like commerce or, or politics and i think uh, the sort of the, the the most important thing if we talk about spaces and conditions and and and, and free spaces is to acknowledge that artistic practice uh, um, needs very you know need a certain certain uh, amount of 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 freedom and uh, on need freedom and uh, very specific conditions, which are not alien towards the arts, but align with their own nature. Yeah. Sorry, that's a bit abstract, but maybe maybe we can dive down a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes, perhaps later. Um, later we can talk about some of the sort of exciting programs that Goethe is doing, not just locally, of course, um, but regionally. Um, Michelle, perhaps you'd like to talk about the work that Bruno is doing? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, just responding to what Han Song was saying, you know, about conditions where uh, an art, artistic practice can unfold and happen, I think that's where Plural Art Mag's um, uh, focus is. Because as you know, we're a digital art publication. We don't actually have a physical space. But um, what we do have is that room for dialogue to happen um, in in unfolding what goes on behind the scenes when an artist makes the work through interviews with the artist. And for example, uh, recently, you know, as part of Comma Spaces 12 Solos project, one of the artists actually wrote for us, Hui Xian kind of wrote about her, um, how it was like to be an artist working on her solo in Comma Art Space. So in, in that sense, I guess, um, the space that we are for, the, the art artists as well as their audience is, is that space of a bridge to kind of connect them and uh, germinate conversations and kind of provide a different point of view into what you see so that you don't just see the finished product, right? Um, but, but rather you can kind of like delve into the insights of the artist. And I think that that's actually really important because if you're talking about uh, what conditions do artists need to flourish, I think a very big part is the audience because you need a receptive uh, audience who will, you know, who will not write to the newspaper about how we are not ready for um, graffiti to be on a, on a lamppost. You need um, a public that is willing to explore what art can be um, so that artists can be viewed as more than just non-essential. <laughs> yeah. So that's for sure. For sure. I mean, I, 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 um, what a lot of what you're saying definitely resonates with me in terms of you know uh, the need to to um, have an arts ecosystem um, that caters as much to the audience as uh, as opposed as well as artists. Um, and sometimes I also think that it's not perhaps not useful to um, frame these two positions separately, audiences can also be artists, of course, and yeah. artists are also audiences. Um, and um, in this, you know, I also wanted to, to talk about the kind of diversity of, of the work that each of you do. Um, all of you work with artists um, or perhaps partners um, of different uh, levels, experiences, all coming from different backgrounds. And how do you think that sort of um, helps to helps in the work that you do. 
um, that helps to um, sort of build a healthier arts ecosystem or to sort of facilitate the kind of dialogue that you want to happen. Very James, would you like to start? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, hi. Um, <laughs> a lot of new things going on. I, I think, again, working with the artists uh, and how it generates within an ecosystem, obviously, in my case, it's very specific to the region of, of Yolchikata. Uh, so when we're working, uh, obviously, when an artist comes, we have our team of technicians, but we outsource. And there is a very strong uh, artistic community and, and technical support in Jogja. You're talking about a, a city, as I'm sure you all know, in Indonesia, you have Bandung and you have Yogyakarta. And Yogyakarta, it it's breathes art. Uh, and, and so for me, it's always a delight in that we will do a lot of things in house, but we uh, enable an artist to, to, for example, go to a, a carpenter uh, who normally does furniture, but then in this case, we will uh, engage them to do some carving work, uh, which would be for the artwork. And, and they then would have that uh, experience of, of spreading out. And, and that goes the same for, for marble, for granite, for uh, cement. Um, in all these different forms. I think most recently in Singapore, uh, we've been beginning to explore uh, 3D modeling and then also 3D printing. Uh, and that's something where if we take a, an example would be a work with Ashley Bickerton, which we, we have the solo show of now, we're currently, or I'm currently in dialogue with, with Ashley using his original sketches to use an Indonesian 3D modeler who is not in-house at the, the Yao, but is um, part of the art you know, ecosystem of Georgia. Uh, he's modeling, and then that's being 3D printed in Singapore, and then it's being sent from Singapore back to Georgia to be handcrafted and handworked, and, and then it will actually come back to Singapore to be 3D scanned. And then it will be sent again. So there's, there's this kind of regional um, linkages between not necessarily uh, artistic dialogue between artists, but artistic dialogue between technicians and craftsmen uh, and, and what that can then generate and what can then enable an art to progress or you know, technically wise, but to, to, to move a lot forward um, in what can be done. I think that for me, that's the eco art system that I'm looking at because it's, it's all technical, but it definitely, um, it has to spread across countries, yeah. Uh, uh, certainly, James, I think that what you're describing is, um, I mean, it, it uh, speaks to um, sometimes the, the unseen labor behind a lot of um, the, um, the artwork that we see um, at, uh, at the platform such as the Singapore Art Week. Um, you know, there, that a lot of the, the sculptures, the artworks will not be able to happen um, without definitely the sort of expertise that you're describing. Um, and um, uh, perhaps Michelle, uh, would you like to talk about your experience um, working perhaps on, on the Heartland project with, with different artists um, and of course um, profiling um, different collaborators and artists in, in rural art? Well, the Heartland project was uh, basically a chance for us to leverage on our that, that kind of bird's eye view of the art ecosystem here in Singapore. Because I mean, as a publication, you kind of, it's your job, you kind of have to know um, what's going on in the art team, whether it's um, emerging artists or established artists and what the, um, what are different people doing that's exciting. And so that allowed us, you know, to be that bridge between National Arts Council and the artists because um, in a very big way that project was to kind of um, lend a show of support to the art industry during a very difficult and very uncertain time. So um, the, what, what we did was we commissioned 
each artist to make a work that was meant to exist on a microsite. Um, and at first that was just going to be the, the main gist of the project. But we also said, hey, you know, since we're putting out all these artworks and these artists have made um, artwork specifically for this project, so why not make it for sale as well? Again, we don't really, um, it's, it's not that we want to be gallerists. We think that there's a very strong, um, you know, established ecosystem there already, but it's more about uh, seeing what opportunities there are and if it can help the artists, why not? So we, um, we put up the, the works and we said, you know, um, if you want to put it up for sale, let us know, we'll, we'll write it down, but then like we don't take the commission, um, all the proceeds go to the artists. And we've had some very good responses from there um, there are buyers from overseas even, and it's also kind of like spun into its own thing because now we have some um, governmental institutions coming to our Heartlands website to, if they, in the event that they needed a gift for like, you know, um, one of those, what do you call it? Um, you have to go, you, you have to bring a gift overseas or, yeah, you know what I mean, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so it became like a, a good um, aggregate of, um, you know, this is where you can find many Singaporean artists or local artists doing work and you can see a sampling. Yeah, so that's been an option. <laughs> I think that's really, really wonderful. I mean, the, the kind of, um, uh, I mean, I, I suddenly think that, you know, um, just referring back to what Han Song mentioned about um, being an ableist of, um, the art scene. I think that plural art has definitely gone beyond uh, its remit um, as a kind of digital platform to um, to encourage um, artists to and to support artists in, in sort of very real ways. Um, it, I mean, real ways meaning um, I think, think we all know financial support is always very important <laughs> and, and essential uh, to keep the, the sort of wheels turning in the art scene. Um, and of course, acting as a bridge between um, audiences and, and artists. And you know, speaking of bridges here, yeah, I think Han Song um, perhaps would like to speak a little about the kind of um, regional um, opportunities that you've been able to um, make happen through the work of the Goethe Institute. Um, you know, just not just bilaterally, as you mentioned, but also multilaterally. Mm. Sure. I mean, there are, there are really many different ways how to um, how how we engage with uh, our partners. Um, the first thing I guess we do, what whatever project it is or whatever initiative it is, is to meet um, with different institutions who are interested in us or who we are interested in. And it can be institutional organization as well as individual artists. So uh, we both, we work on both sides. And uh, what is I think crucial as a very first step is to, to, to go into a very open dialogue to actually to find out the, com the, the necessities and the relevancies of what is actually needed and uh, in which areas or on what issue there could be something done. And this is a certain process. Um, we, at least for ourselves, we, we set us like firm to go through because only then we can, we can actually make sure that whatever we, we do will, will have an impact at the end. And I think, and we all, whatever um, uh, we're going to do, we, we always look for, we look for the impact of the arts activities we are trying to set up, right? Um, so we do that, going into a dialogue and, um, and then to share our expertise. And, and from there, we actually go to develop certain initiatives and to develop projects. So providing funds is only one element uh, in, in our ways of engagement, uh, which comes, you know, only um, towards uh, the point when we would launch or execute certain projects. So this, this dialogue, I think it's, it's extremely crucial, um, at, at least for us. 
I mean, to, to, to name a few examples, um, I mean, what we did in the past, for instance, uh, um, which is more of an example that we work with organization or other enablers like the Curators Academy, we did with theater works here, or the, the very big uh, 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 German focus we did with the Singapore Writers Festival. Um, actually, generally the, the festival collaborations we do, um, I think that more stands for, um, collaboration with institutions, but even there, um, it is it is very important for us that we actually step into um, into a process we where we actually can 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 share um, certain program views and 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 our knowledges to 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 develop something together. So that is that is always important for us. Um, another example where the, the engagement is more focused on the artists or, or, or on artists themselves would be possibly um, a the music project we did last year during the during the pandemic during the circuit breaker X Klingt, which was a regional initiative in Southeast Asia um, supporting different musicians. Um, creating uh, videos or audio visual works, which we then presented on our pl pl platform internationally. Um, so I think that was more of a direct um, product, productive or creational um, um, collaboration and direct engagement uh, with artists. Um, a bit similar to that, also the New Sonic project, which is which are aimed more at contemporary musicians, again, Southeast Asia, as well as in Germany. Um, at, the, at, this pro, at that project, we actually then added on institutional partners as well. For instance, the, the Club Transmediale in Berlin, which is a very big, big uh, music festival, so that we can also go beyond uh, musical production and co-production, music co-production, and also into presenting um, on important platforms like, like, like a music festival. So, yeah, this would be yeah, some examples how um, how we set up our projects. That, that's incredible. I mean, I think that the, the, your, the diversity of um, the people whom you, you work with, Han Song, definitely um, transcends um, art form and age and um, location. And um, that's, uh, you know, an um, incredible scope of work. Um, and perhaps um, now we can turn to, to Robbing. I mean, certainly um, for a smaller art space, um, you, you certainly punch above your weight um, in terms of the diversity of the projects that, that you support. And also, um, I, I really enjoy that you also engage with artists of different experiences and different um, sorts of mediums. Yeah, I think um, from this practice point of view. I think it's the nature of contemporary practice now that you need to uh, collaborate with others, especially some kind of a practice that involve with discussion, dialogue, and also exchanges. For example, we, um, for the, the Shape of the Sky by James Jack, and we had we run a few uh, sessions. One session, uh, the story uh, storytelling sessions with um, Malaysia community ecosystem community. So they share with us what they have been doing, and even they share us the cooking uh, workshops that they had. So it was really fun, and this is part of the way how uh, James Jack. Um, you know, realize his work in the communicating with different institutions, different organizations. We also um, run a talk with, um, with a curator from Hawaii and also a graduate student from Yale and US. Um, they have done some research in island related topic, which is uh, resonant with what James Jack is doing for his show at the Coma. So this is a kind of, um, planned collaboration and relationship with different institutions and different organization and being part of artistic practice. But we, we do have a happy incident collaboration 
like for example, we uh, the waiting machine by Yang Jie. So um, so for this one, Yang Jie actually create a clock. Yeah, the clock is the exhibition space. When you enter, then you enter to a clock. You can trigger the buttons and you can you know um, reduce your waiting time. Yeah. <laughs> so his idea is about the waiting, about the time. So the following artist. His name is Bu Ziyan. So he's he he actually he want to he proposed to do um, so he he's most known as a painter, right? So uh, I've been you know challenging him to do something slightly different in the in the space. So he was proposing to use industry materials to do painting in the space. But when he came to see Yang Jie's show, which is the one before him, he said, "I know what I want to do. I'm I'm going to." Um, capture the shadow from Yang Jie's show. So that's a beautiful instance where uh, one artist's show eventually influenced another artist to realize his show. Yeah, so that, that is, um, that's not planned, but it had just happened that way. I think, um, yeah, all, all practice eventually opened up many possibility and opportunity for the artist to collaborate with other artists or other institutions. That's the best. That's wonderful. Um, perhaps we can um, move the, the conversation on to, um, I guess, the, the crux here, which is, you know, what, what we think of that diversity. And um, so we have uh, a question in, from the audience um, asking, what does diversity mean to each of you in the context of your work? And, um, and I'd also like to add to that, you know, what are the kind of voices that you think um, we should be making space for. Um, would any of you like to start? Perhaps Michelle, um, would you like to, to get the conversation rolling? Sure. What kind, uh, just to recap, the question is what kind of, what does diversity mean to us? And yes. what, kind of and what sort of voices do you think uh, we need to make space for? I think diversity exists um, in many different forms. It's partly about, you know, not just giving space to artists that are already established, maybe giving a chance to um, younger emerging artists whom you may not have heard of yet, may not have won any prizes or anything, but you believe that, you know, they're saying something interesting and important, um, maybe sheds light on um, a lesser known story in, in society or it's an important topic. Um, so I think diversity is, is that um, and to make space for it, it, for us, it's very clear it's about coverage in a way. Um, how can we support um, people who are, you know, investigating interesting things with their, with their practice by giving them the space in our magazine? You know, even if even if they're not, let's say, exhibiting in a show, can we interview them? Can we like talk through the ideas and yeah, hopefully not just share their work with the public, but also help help journey with them through that um, process. I mean, I wouldn't claim that we we're we're so good that we can do that for everyone, but like you know, it's it's about um, being willing to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly, I think it's a lot about um, the openness that a lot of us have talked about here um, that enables us to um, create these sorts of opportunities with artists, for artists, um, and also the kind of larger ecosystem, uh, other enablers, you know, uh, technical people who support the kind of art making process. Um, James, would you like to, to say a little bit about, you know, the kind of voices that um, you feel we should be making space for? Yeah, I think there's, it's, it's, there's two, <clears throat> two sections to this really. In, in that because the, the foundry is owned by a gallery, um, that makes it very unusual. Uh, and so obviously there is the commercial aspect to the foundry enabling the gallery's artists to create works. Um, so there is a, a a diversity in, in my sense is diversity of, of type of work. Um, and, and so that could be that we enable uh, Jason Lim, for example, uh, who has 
the knowledge of ceramic shell. Um, and then we know we have a, a large kiln, not really used for ceramic um, firing, but is used for the foundry process. But as soon as we built that kiln, the first thing that the gallery did was of course say to Jason, well, we only use it you know, once a month, why don't you come out and, and do as much kiln firing as you as you want to do? So he had a great time. But you have a, a foundry then with Jason in, in, the, in, the, in the yard doing sand um, sawdust uh, firing, which you can't do in Singapore. And then at the same time, uh, we try our best not to limit it only to, to, to big name or to expensive artists, you know. So our a body of young artists, which Gaja does, and every year we do the New Now show. In, inevitably, every year, if there is a young artist there who uh, has a sculptural eye, who is not just doing paintings, we will uh, always offer the technical um, services of, of Yao. So Kaylee, you know, ended up uh, spending weeks uh, out in Jogja working with the plywood, look, working with the cement, enabling the team to help her to, to do larger pieces uh, and structural piece, pieces. So I think for us, the diversity is in, in two ways. One is a diversity of work and a diversity of sculpture, but it's also a diversity in, in your right, that we have you know, the big name artists, but we also have the young artists. Uh, something that perhaps we can't offer so easily is the ability for or anyone to come and, and do it. You know, because it is a small boutique foundry and, and you know, there's a time limit in, in that we put all of our attention to our artists, but we can't have everyone applying to, to come. Uh, and so that's something that will only maybe develop further as the future goes and we get bigger and, and, and so on. But um, yeah, for me, that's, that's the, the best we can do really, <laughs> diversity, yeah. Certainly, um, Robin, would you like to, to add to that? Well, uh, for for commerce space, I think diversity means um, openness um, and also support. So uh, openness means uh, for for the space. I think means that you are the space able to embrace different kind of practice, uh, not to be fixed in a particular kind or particular. Um, objective and motivation. So uh, the space itself need to in, in, in a more neutral stand and able to um, to challenge um, itself to accept those uh, those ideas. That's that is one of the way to to encourage diversity of practices. And another thing is about support. Um, I think a space could function in a way that supporting artists to realize their ideas. So in a way, um, it's, a, it's a way to make space because you allow those practice to be, to be able to realize in the best ideal way. Um, so the, yeah, that's for, for common space. I think that is the diversity making space could base on these two principles. Thank you. Um, Han Song, of course, with the, the breadth of the work that the Goethe Institute is doing, I think there are sort of many possibilities for diversity here. Would you like to elaborate? I think, um, um, and I think this not only goes for the Goethe Institute, but for any public arts institution, um, is that um, you do have to look um, when you sort of decide how you how you want to, how you look at the arts ecosystem as a whole, um, where where is support needed, and and with the support you give or with the initiative you set up, what are the ways you can provide um, to diversify the arts ecosystem? And I think when we talk about a diversity. Uh, um, it is always also related to power structures. Uh, um, where is there more support? Uh, where where do we have um, economical challenges as well? And from from our perspective as a good institute, we certainly um, see the need in supporting innovative 
artistic practice, experimental artistic practice, and also critical artistic practice. Because um, for, for these areas, but first of all, these areas are needed in, 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 and, and that's my view. Um, when we talk about diversity of, of art scenes um, in general, and these are also the areas which are easily under um, scrutiny when it comes to you know um, commercial challenges, um, because um, many when it comes to experimental or very innovative practice, many practitioners don't have the um, not always have the resources they would need um, um, to to fulfill their practice, and I think that's an element, um, especially you know an institution who works in the public interest has to ask themselves you know, how, how we can provide uh, uh, certain support systems there and to, to, um, to play our part in the, the diversification um, of the scenes in, in general. And I think on, on, on the other part, there's, there, there's diversity as a social issue. And um, in acknowledgement that uh, artistic practice always um, has um, directly or indirectly also have a social impact is part of a wider social discourse and um, that is something um, thematically uh, to to be addressed which can then feed in into programming which can feed in into into certain curation of 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 of, of initiatives um yeah so i would see it uh, diversity in this in these two areas and I think the third thing, which is always very imminent uh, when we talk about diversity is also intersectionality. Um, because um, when we talk about very diverse practices, diverse cultural practices, um, um, diverse, diverse groups or different groups, um, it is also helpful to see the interlinks uh, in between the two. That would be my take on it. Thank you so much. Um... I think that that's a sort of very useful framework and in fact for us to perhaps um, approach our sort of last talking point of the day which is um, what do you what do each of you see the other challenges um, as to um, achieving um, the kind of things that many of you have speaked about here today which is you know ideas of experimentation connection um, contemplation uh, in terms of you know, time, working different materials, working different partners, certainly, um, and reaching out to um, different sorts of groups of people whom um, you feel uh, could um, benefit from the kind of dialogue or um, knowledge of the work that each of you are doing. Han Song, would you like to start? Sure, uh, happy to start, but I, I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I, if, I, if I understood the question. If you, oh, I, I, if I you, mean, I, I, I suppose um, I'd like to understand what you see the challenges are um, with regards to achieving the kind of um, aims of the work that we are doing here. I think that many of us have talked about um, the need for experimentation, for openness, um, mm -hmm. for connection. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I mean, there, there are always more challenges you wish uh, than you wish for, right? Um, <laughs> so I don't know if I can indulge in all of them, but um, very specifically to us, uh, uh, with our presence here in Singapore uh, at Near Road, um, for 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 a long period of time we did not have any kind of event space. Our good Institute here um, uh, so far consists of offices and and classroom where we also conduct uh, uh, German German as foreign language which is, you know, the other part of our mission. Um, but we also um, um, see that the need for physical space and, and beyond, I think, um, in a very densified urban environment like, like Singapore and many, many other big, big world cities, um, the, the availability of art spaces often breaks down on a, on a very practical dimension of the availability of space. And in a place like Singapore, many other, other, other cities as well, that space is actually um, um, treated as a commodity. And um, so how do we, do we navigate that if we want to, to you know, uh, provide spaces? Um, 
so um, until now we did not had an event space, but to 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 also to to react on the conditions here, we uh, recently um, renovated and refurbished our former library into a project space, which uh, will be launched soon, um, in, a, in a couple of weeks time actually. And uh, that is something we would like to, to make very open, very accessible. I mean, we hope that we can create some, some kind of ownership from the Singapore art scene as well. And um, that is something uh, uh, we are working on right now. And it is, it is a di direct response from us and in regards of challenges of the availability of physical spaces for, for yeah, for independent uh, 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 cultural practice. Oh, okay. Um, that, that's actually really welcome news. I think that, you know, um, in Singapore, that, as you mentioned, there's always at the reef of art space. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll all be looking forward to um, the kind of space that Goethe will offer um, the Singapore art scene. Um, it will certainly add to the kind of the certainly helps to enrich, I think, the kind of offerings um, that we have here in the art scene. Um, uh, I'm afraid that we are out of time. This hour went by too quickly, I'm afraid. Um, but I'd like to thank all the speakers really for making time uh, to be with us and of course our audience um, for staying with us um, this afternoon. Um, I'd like to hand over the time back to Siwa from Art and Market. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for the very wonderful discussion. Uh, and lastly, thank you to our audience for joining me today. Um, before we conclude, I'd like to invite all of you to join us for Art and Market's Seesaw Virtual Trail in partnership with Singapore Art Week 2021. Our host, artist Kelly Limerick, Project Director of ASEAN Foundation Ben Han, and Creative Consultant Audrey Lim will guide you through selected Singapore Art Week projects over lunch next Thursday and Friday, 28 and 29 January. Do visit artandmarket.net slash seesaw for more information and to sign up. Thank you and have a wonderful week ahead. <laughs>